Moralists claim that this squalid story is a tragedy. But as the greedy and terminally stupid couple survives the precipitous reversal of their fortunes, which indeed resulted from their own wretched behavior, it's barely a cautionary tale. Bring home something tasty for once. The seaweed's gone off, the lard is rancid, and that old boot won't last the week. A bit of cod or mackerel even, or bacon, or bread, or veg. veg. Mm -hmm. Right you are, my dear. A fish, by all means. Big, mm, big fish. The fisherman hasn't recently caught anything but a cold. Still, he's happy, but this evidently being his lucky day, the hapless fisherman hooks a flounder who, wouldn't you know, is enchanted. Return me to the water, and your wish is my command. My wife wants a nice piece of fish to eat, but I'm sure she'd prefer a bigger, more pleasant domicile. Throw me back, and she shall have a castle. The flounder was true to his word. A castle with 100 rooms and as many servants and indoor plumbing to boot stands where his hovel had been. His wife, swollen with pride, hardly blinks when told the castle is a gift from a fish. Husband, ask your fish for a bigger edifice for my friends and a title to match the property. Well, if you don't ask, you don't get, my precious. I'll whisper a word in his shell like. I think he has ears. He's just a messenger, see? No wants of his own, the pathetic sap. Thinks he can satisfy this lunatic battle axe's anchoring for more stuff. Wrong! I'm sorry to ask, but my wife wants you to upgrade the castle to a church. And she wants to be Pope. Order people around, wear a big hat, have one of the sticks with the curly thing and, and the funny robes and the coloured windows and all of that, you know. You saved my life. I'll grant your request. Pope? What was to become of the current one? And what did he think would happen to him when she's Pope? I bless you all and forgive you, everyone, except those who owe me money. Pay up and nobody gets hurt. Be generous and compassionate, my love. You are a pope, after all. I can't afford to be compassionate. Besides, that's not my job. I could be compassionate if I were like God. Tell your fish to make me like God, and then I'll show you compassion and mercy and punishment when necessary. Ah, well. She perhaps has not heard the popular saying that there is no god but God. My wife, the Pope, would be like God. Make it happen. And so I shall. Return home and see his will be done. She shall be unto God. A distinct change in tone, no? But lost on the fisherman, I'm certain. Who knew I could watch too much? Life is so unfair. I just wanted to be God. Could she be any dumber? Never heard of overreaching, selfish, vulgar, and profane. They wasted their chance to improve their lot. She demanded to be more than human. He did not dissuade her. But are they truly punished for their wicked pride? No. They don't have what they never had. Big deal! If you think that's pretty thin, too, play on. Beyond unrequited love, this destitute fisherman has little to offer his disgruntled wife. Shelter and meager sustenance from the sea are not enough for her. I'd have left the witch. Sickening, really. Let's make them appreciate what they don't have. Make it gross. Let's move. Now, I 
Mmm, smelly. him out and is left with nothing but her amorphous desire for something, anything, more. The formerly luckless angler hooks a magic flounder and wishes on behalf of his wife, the grasping shrew, for a bigger house. How novel! The flounder swears he'll deliver, while hardly seeming to mind the hook, piercing its sagging lip. Perhaps a bit of sand in that little bit of light. Make it foul. Let's move! Yeah. 
lit. Made a go boom! <laughs> a vain glorious castle has replaced his dumpy domicile. The only thing more insipid than realized wishes are white weddings. Let's ruin this joint before I sicken up! Make it stinky. Let's move!
Rump and stump! Rump and stump is blood picking good! Castle did not slake her thirst for things. Who couldn't see that coming? Now she wants to be Pope. Though obviously several cards short of a full deck. Is she crazy enough to want that sort of power? Let's deprive her of what's left of her wits. <laughs> Make it nasty. Oh, that's disgusting. But stomp it! Now I can rip and stop it, butt kicking good. Chomp and stomp. She's flipping crazy now. Look at her go. My turn. My turn. The fisherman, abject but willing slave to his wife's ambition, demands the papacy for her delectation. Would that he have asked for her premature demise. Make it foul. Thank <laughs> you. 
if I detect it now. Convert this all to trash and rubble! <laughs> the fisherman's home has morphed into a church. Oh. If you believe in organized religion, or a supreme being who cares about us, you might be moved. But as I don't, let's break down that door! Make it gross. Now who's smelling? Now the church and the bitch still isn't satisfied. Now she wants to be God. If only she knew what a boring job he has, she'd think twice. We're in church. Where's the guilt, the sin, the wrath? Let's make it biblical. Make it disgusting. Stop. 
Oh, smite me! Oh, smite me! Oh, oh, heavenly! Oh, 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 oh. oh, a climactic finale. I hope everyone dies in the end. The fisherman makes his final wish that his wife become unto God. I know where this is going, but I'll save the surprise. Make it nasty. Do it now. Now I'm rotten. Bit. Said she devil. Now you're living at a god and you're liking it. <laughs> god lives like a peasant. God lives like a. <laughs> and that's the holy end of that. The fisherman was a dim witted and pliant tool of his insatiable wife, and his weak character invited disaster. Their downfall loomed, one greedy want away. And we didn't have to wait long for the anvil to drop. Mopes got what they deserved, I say. The wife's taste ran to more anything. Food, money, stuff, whatever. The limp husband would do anything to appease her voracious appetite and unquenchable thirst. The moment he caught the magic flounder, it was enlisted in perpetual service to his wife's ruinous greed. Spare me, and I promise to make you happy. You'll have to do better than that. 
It's the missus you have to please. Anything less than riches will just piss her off. I might as well eat you now. Done. She's wealthy. And, um, could you stick a plaster on my jaw? Even poor as dirt, she treated her husband and her neighbours like dumb beasts. If you worship me as the goddess I am, you can live in these fine new houses. If you don't, you can die. Slowly. They thank you, your holiest, most revered, beneficent, and majestic one. <laughs> they are grateful. As am I. Besides chillblains, pimples, heretics, and stomach gas, talk is the thing most not worth having more of. She wants a cathedral this time, with accoutrements, she says, and she insists that she be Pope. You're killing me with her constant demands. Better you than me. Would you mind removing the hook from my eye? Smarts. You've heard of the arbitrary and capricious nature of unintended consequences? Bet the new Pope hadn't. Or hubris? How about arrogance? Self-indulgence? Oh, never mind. This is good. <laughs> I'm not cruel by nature. But this dunce has had more than his share of chances to redeem his stupidity. Perhaps if you made her like God, she could at last be happy. That's your idea of a solution to this problem? Well, I'm not surprised. But no doubt you will be. Shove what's left of my entrails back down my mouth and go home to your wife. You shall both have what you deserve. Ignorant to the very end, she believes the fates have conspired against her. She is a blameless, pathetic wretch. Fortune's fool, the plaything of wicked, unnatural forces. Never crossed her mind that her greed could be fed, but she could never be full. Those who expect a fair shake when they roll dice with enchanted fish are incurable optimists, unwitting masochists, or idiots. For this couple, I bet on the last. May all our stories end so well. Until next time.